Look at Samira's haircut. She I look so like a cute. little boy. No, she doesn't. Oh, like, hey, Josh, like, oh, my God, you should come on the podcast. Like, ah, oh, like, man, I'm like, Mur -mur. I can see. Show the show the crowd. The crowd wants to see you. Everyone wants to see your waves. What waves? No, I see them. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just don't think there's anything left for me to do anymore besides go on Depop. Look. Aw, you're showing your leg. Look. Isn't it nice? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude i don't know what to do anymore so are we gonna talk about anorexia today or another day i guess today i was gonna say when you were showing your leg it looked like you were showing like something like i feel like i would have seen that on tumblr like oh my god look how skinny my leg is yeah i was so skinny maxing showing my because you know when you like your pant leg like when it like goes like like okay, when it ends put like your the leg right down <laughs> put your leg down Dude, my ex-boyfriend would not stop skinny maxing, and that's why I'm the way I am now. That's just not true. I just feel like I can't say anything anymore without it sounding like the dumbest fucking thing that anyone's <laughs> ever said. I know. And, like, anytime I listen to anyone else talk, like, not you, but, like, just, like, other people, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Okay, that's what I want to know about is what happened. <laughs> like, that's, that's what, what I want to know about is, like, how do you listen to something online anymore and not be like no i know when you hear when you listen to it because i okay honestly i'm sorry this sounds really bad and i've been evaluating this don't worry guys i'm trying to unpack it but i just feel like i keep doing that in real life like no I same like someone says something and i'm just like no same for well, audio I... listeners we're like <laughs> rolling our eyes back into our heads and like looking like we're gonna yak do you think that something is happening? Because it feels like something is happening to me. Do this. not say something's happening to the human consciousness. <laughs> Do not. Be nauseous right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you look like you're going to throw up. <laughs> That's how I feel. I don't know what's out. wrong with me today. I just didn't. I keep not eating enough because I like can't. Same. <laughs> okay, guys, Same. let's talk about anorexia. <laughs> oh, I'm not. That's not even. I'm not. I'm just kidding. About anorexia? Well, I was joking because I was like, I didn't need enough. No, I, I got it. I haven't I been anorexic it. since I was young. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, you're like always anorexic. Really? I think so. I think you're just like in recovery. I just feel like everyone's anorexic then. Probably. Because how are you not? How do you not have that? Well, some people are bulimic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry. oh my god <laughs> we were gonna talk about tumblr i wanted to talk about like the eating disorder culture on tumblr and then also just like how it like fucked everyone up forever pretty much because like i feel like when tumblr happened it was like one of the first social media platforms and so no one really like knew what they were doing which i know we've talked about a lot where people were just kind of posting whatever very similar to like twitter no it's like the how twitter was when it first started i feel like it's like yeah. very similar to that yeah and it was like this thing where people could go on and be anonymous and just post pretty much anything and there weren't like really any moderators at the very beginning of it really has like affected an entire generation um but one of the articles was talking about like tumblr and tiktok and the comparison and it said um this is a quote from the article it's like a grit daily article but it said in the 2010s, Tumblr owned the space that TikTok now fills, an online place where teenagers can come together and share content. And, like, that, like, essentially just, like, what was was what Tumblr was. Like, it was what TikTok is now. I feel like that's the best way to compare it to people for people who, like, weren't on Tumblr. Dude, it's crazy, too, that, like, it's just, like, an interesting thing of, like, generations, like, turning over and then there being people who didn't experience Tumblr and, like the new norm being having only experienced TikTok and only experiencing Twitter and Instagram and all these social media platforms in their present form and like not knowing that there was like a better thing before which is like really crazy that like no it is crazy well it's also crazy too like of it being like whether it's like better or worse which I like want to get into later because that's like a really interesting thing that people have been discussing. But first, like just to explain like kind of the landscape of like what Tumblr was like 
I feel like when you like think of Tumblr, the thing that's like kind of inherent in Tumblr culture was like the sad girl aesthetic and like eating disorders and like self-harm tips and like Effie Stoneham, like sad girl on a Del Rey, like 1975, like romanticizing like mental illness and all that. Mm-hmm. Like that was what Tumblr was at its core, essentially, or at least like a whole like world of Tumblr. And it was really crazy, like how much was on there that just was allowed to be on there. Like there were like tips on self harm, like pictures of self harm, and specifically with like the eating disorder stuff. Like there was like thinspo, like thigh gaps were like a huge thing, which like thigh gap pics were crazy. That was dude. Also, I'm just like remembering like see like go like you would like log on to like a tumblr timeline and literally like it would just be like pictures of like arms with like cuts on them yes yeah and like then like the next post would be like porn and then the next post would be like one direction like icons (laughs) with flower crowns edited on them yeah (laughs) and then the next post would be like like ariana grande's thighs (laughs) and she was like wearing like abercrombie cut off jeans that like were like tight to her like ribs it was crazy no that like there was like a few pictures of like arms with like cuts on them that were so like prevalent i feel like that, <laughs> like that's insane did, that like, there were famous crazy. pictures of arms with well cuts there were like famous i found this one article i don't think i sent it to you but it was an article from like a buzzfeed article in 2014 where they like interviewed um one of the most this sounds so fucked up but one of the most famous self-harm blogs out there because that was a thing where there were like like how like there were famous stan twitter accounts yeah there were famous like self-harm blogs that people knew about which is a crazy thing yeah no tumblr like just had an insane amount of like pro anorexia and pro bulimia content um And that was, like, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was just, like, pro, like, pro Anna and pro Mia forums online were crazy. And first of all, even just, like, the name of that, like, is a crazy thing because we, like, took these two eating disorders and, like, made them into people. Like, we humanized them. That is literally insane. Like, that's crazy. That is that's how people would talk about them. They would be like, oh, like she, like, like, yeah, yeah. And, and, or anorexia and bulimia as like she, like, that's crazy. That's like such a, like, interesting thing to bring up. Cause I like, wasn't even, see, I wasn't like super deep on this, but I would just see it all on my timeline and stuff. I feel yeah. like you like are m- much more knowledgeable about this than me. And I like, didn't even like think about the idea why were we turning them into people and like the fact that it was like kids doing it too is like a very interesting thing I feel like it was almost this way of like taking these eating disorders and making them into like your friends because like you were so lonely online and stuff and just lonely in the real world and that just also plays into the whole thing of romanticizing mental illness and stuff where you literally were taking these two eating disorders and making them into your friends. And that's crazy. Like, that's so fucked up. But, yeah, basically there were these um, different forums um, on Tumblr, but also on other websites where people would – and I am I feel like most of them are probably gone now. I, like, tried looking them up, and I found some Reddit posts where people were asking if there were any that were still active and stuff because mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of them got taken down. But I'm sure there's still, like, some out there. I just don't know where they would be. Um, but like basically these forums would literally give you like tips on how to lose weight, tips on how not to be hungry, like tips on, or you would post like, like people would post on them and they would post their like goal weight, like GW and their like current weight. And it was like a crazy, like it was so fucked up. And then people would encourage people about losing weight and stuff. And there's like so much stuff. Like I remember like people would give tips on how not to be hungry or like diet coke was like a big thing because it was like um that was like a way that you like would not be hungry but like also not gain weight which also is so interesting because I was thinking about this this is kind of a side note but you know how diet coke is like in right like it's just like been a trend for like a long time where people will just like talk like like they're like oh diet coke people just like love diet coke and it's like I wonder if that's where it stemmed from a little bit. That is interesting because, like, you wouldn't, like, know what the root of something like that is. Like, you can't really trace that back. And, like, it just kind of appears in, like, the mass consciousness a little bit. 
And also, like, Lana Del Rey songs, I know, have, like, a lot of references to, like, Coca-Cola and stuff. Like, I just think that that's an interesting thing. But that's kind of, like, a side note. I don't know if any of that is real or not. But, yeah. Yeah, but they would, like, I remember, like, specifically a few things. Because, like, a main thing with, like, not eating is that you would have, like, bad breath constantly. And so people would post tips on, like, how to get rid of bad breath. Or, like, they would post tips on, because I literally did this where I went to, like, a psych um like a psychiatrist and they would weigh you at the beginning of every visit Mm -hmm. and I would put weights in my pockets would you actually yes that's crazy because I would like read that in books all the time or like in fanfics and stuff like that and I like didn't think it was like a thing you could actually like get away with well I would because when I went to a psychiatrist I think I was going like once every couple of weeks or something when I was in like middle school or high school or whenever it was and so um yeah, I would like put weights in my pockets when they would like weigh me, which is crazy. But that was like, but I found out about that through these like forums and online because I just yeah. like wouldn't have known that that was a thing. Researching online how to lose weight. That is a very fascinating thing like to like go through the process of doing because like, I don't know. I don't think that that answer is like really like going to be the same for anyone. Yeah. And like there's not like there's honestly not a lot of healthy ways to lose weight I don't think like I feel like a lot of like like obviously that's like a really like overarching statement like obviously there are healthy ways to lose weight like if you like are like eating healthy and like working out but honestly like any way that's like this like very like like with the goal of getting skinnier it's really hard for it to not turn into an eating disorder and I remember like looking up ways to lose weight online and like not as much even like in like forums and stuff but I would come across that stuff where it would just like I'd look it up on Twitter or something and be like how to like Mm -hmm. and like it would just like be some kid (laughs) saying something that like wasn't true you know yeah like it's crazy I know like Because then I got really into, like, this was, like, a lot later. I think in college I started watching. Because nutritionists would start posting videos where they would be reviewing, like, influencers what I eat in a day videos. And I remember thinking that those were super helpful because they were just, like, very, like, like, they were, like, from actual nutritionists who are, like, (laughs) trained in the field. And they would always disclaim it with being, like, everyone's body's different. Like, this person, like, isn't, their diet won't work for you. Like, da 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 whatever. And it is cool that we've, like, gotten to that point. Um, which is like the thing I kind of want to talk about with like TikTok because I feel like that's the most or one of the most interesting things is how Tumblr has just like everything that was on Tumblr has now made its way over to TikTok. And with like eating disorder stuff in particular, I think that that's a really interesting thing because I found this one quote um, from someone who's like struggled with eating disorders um, from an article in I think it was the guard or from a nylon article um but it says the main difference is how much more covert tiktok is about it compared to tumblr it's all disguised as wellness or being healthy it's much more different for me to differentiate what's taking care of my body and what's my eating disorder trying to creep back into my world and i thought that that was so interesting because the thing about Tumblr was that it was all so out there. Like there yeah. were literally just pictures of people with cuts on their arms. Like there were like just pictures of people with thigh gaps and like like straight out being like, this is how you become anorexic, like a step-by-step guideline for it. And on TikTok now, it's like a lot of that content is still there, but it's just disguised as wellness trends or it's disguised as like, like whatever. And I think that mm-hmm. that's a really interesting thing. <clears throat> well, I think that's sort of what was happening because now it's easy to look at things like YouTubers, like what I eat in a day video, or like even when like someone like like Claudia Salewski, I remember I would watch her videos of like, this is how I lost weight. And like, it never made any sense to me. And I like looking back now, I'm like, oh, well, that like just wasn't healthy. I mean, I don't know. I think that's like the case for a lot of videos like that, that were from that time of people just being like, here's how to lose weight. Because I feel like I just don't know if they're I don't know thinking about if there's like a healthy way to do that because I just feel like our bodies kind of default into like obviously as long as like you're balancing like like th- like this is like with the thought of like okay we're balancing like being somewhat active and like eating okay but yeah. like I feel like at that point it's like 
there's just so much pressure on like the idea of like what like what your body should look like and everyone bought everyone's bodies look so different so then I feel like a lot of those videos are literally just trying to like put your body in a place it's not really meant to go yeah no exactly and it's also like I forget what it's called but there's also that one eating disorder where you become obsessed with like clean eating Mm-hmm. And only eating like certain foods that aren't like like that aren't processed like whatsoever. And that's also a really scary rabbit hole because I feel like that is disguised a lot in those what I eat in a day videos where people talk about eating like whole foods and like healthy foods, which on the surface sounds like obviously what you should be doing. But that's a really scary rabbit hole to go down of like of like just like because it's again just like checking the ingredients on everything you're eating which is very similar to checking the calories of everything you're eating and like like that's just a really like I don't know that's like also a really scary thing like there's just so many different ways it can like go wrong and the internet just like perpetuates that I feel like Mm. but I do definitely think that at least on TikTok I think I think TikTok has made even if it's a small improvement like it's way better than Tumblr ever was with that stuff because like yeah Tumblr was like not as outward yeah yeah it's not as outward and also it's like you'll like even if like you see like pro like eating disorder content on Tumblr or or on TikTok there's also so much content that's the opposite of that like Mm -hmm. there's so much content on TikTok that celebrates food and that celebrates like eating like delicious meals and food bloggers and stuff and I feel like that's almost made the forefront which is really like cool to see well, also along those lines, I think there's a lot more of an awareness around like normalizing people's bodies because I feel like we didn't even have like even just the idea of like, okay, so <laughs> you're going to feel like, like, okay, like the idea of like body shapes, but this is like a stupid example, but I feel like it like really applies because okay so like the barrel jeans like how the barrel jeans are like really meant for like short people and like like I didn't even know before that jean that there was like a reason why like certain jeans wouldn't like fit my body shape you know what I mean and it like almost like brainwashes you into thinking like you're fat or something even though like these jeans are literally just not made for the way your body's built and I think that's becoming like a way more like jeans are becoming more inclusive and then along those lines it's like okay so if like this one pair of jeans is like literally just like bringing awareness to like because I saw on reddit like there was this forum where it was like oh like short girls who have like pear-shaped bodies these jeans like Uh do the same effect to you that like like jeans on like girls with like more like like straight like straight bodies I guess I don't know what the like name of it is um but like just like other body types like it creates like the same effect but in a different like gene shape because of just like how that works I don't know I don't know the mechanics but like (laughs) that's crazy because I feel like back then we didn't even really think about that as like an idea you just kind of saw a picture of someone and you were like this is what this person looks like and like I'm meant to look like that and it's like not how that works and I don't know at least in my head when I was younger I would look at girls online like I'd look at like Emma Chamberlain and be like why is my body not as straight as hers yeah no same yeah and that's like because we've talked about this before but TikTok just in general is like way more inclusive with different body types and different races and like everything and it's really cool and I think that like yeah like I feel like if it's gotten like that much better already it's like it's gonna continue to keep getting better you know like I don't think we're ever gonna go back to what we had when like the internet first started Mm -hmm. but it is also interesting because there is so much um nostalgia for that era of the internet and like for early tumblr um and like people will like post about that on tiktok and instagram where they'll like but they and they don't even know like they, they don't, weren't even on it they just have the idea of it in their heads no literally and it's like the idea of like just like because like the 1975 or like arctic monkeys well and like also just like stuff. pure internet and pure social media yeah. which i think makes sense to miss but no, sorry. yeah 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 or like even just like celebrity culture back in 2014 like all of that makes a lot of sense to miss but it's like I don't know like wish you were a part of because it was like this like collective like almost like historical thing that I think we're gonna look back on later from now and be like wow that was the beginning of social media and that is actually psychotic like that was a crazy thing we experienced just like so fascinating how 
because tumblr would romanticize like depression a lot and that was like its main thing it's like oh it's like it's like romantic and like sexy to be like a sad girl you know and like to not eat and just smoke cigarettes and drink coffee and like stay out all night like that was like that's what it romanticized and even like tiktok i feel like it's starting to romanticize it with like rotting videos obviously it's like very different but where it's like do you know about that do you know about wait that? is like what what are rotting videos is it just like it's just like ro- like, like like rotting yeah like just like rotting in bed all day that's so interesting well that's kind of like I don't know it is weird though because I feel like a lot of the things on TikTok it's more so like normalizing things that are normal no <laughs> like yeah rotting in bed every like I mean I guess it's like not like always healthy to do but it's like no it definitely, like, that's like, like different healthy. than like self-harm you know no yeah no it is just like yeah it's just like interesting because the thing about TikTok that like I feel like is different than like any other early social media is like how advanced we've gotten with algorithms especially so if you like start watching a certain type of video on TikTok or interacting with it like you're only ever going to see that type of video Mm -hmm. um whereas like obviously like it was a similar thing even with like Tumblr where that would be what would show up on your feed but I feel like it was less like we just like didn't like know as much about algorithms back then so it was like less intense well, I feel like it also, it was, like, more about the accounts you chose to follow. Yeah. And I know there was, like, kind of, like, an explore, like, Tumblr page, right? Like. Yeah. But it wasn't but, as, like. Yeah. Yeah. And like, also, it's definitely like, not what TikTok is now. Honestly, like, Tumblr, very interesting because it wasn't, like, there were different, like, there were different sides, I guess. But, like, everything was just Tumblr, if that makes sense. Yeah. At least for that era. It was all just, like, in this one category of this is what Tumblr is. Yeah. E- even if it was, like, based around a different, like, person like they were aesthetic. following. Yeah. It- it's just very- it's interesting. Because it all had the same, like, yeah, like, feel to it and the same ideas. And I feel like everyone who was on Tumblr, like, avidly, like, like, because I feel like even the stuff that you talk about where it's just like seeing a bunch of like eating disorder stuff seeing a bunch of like self-harm stuff like that was just like a part of like any like big tumblr users like experience on tumblr and that's not the case for tiktok yeah no that's a really good point yeah i feel like if you talk about tumblr now with other people that were on tumblr it's like we all have kind of this shared experience of what we saw and like even like some people were definitely on other like or saw more of one type of content than other types of content but I feel like it was hard to be on Tumblr and not at least see a little bit of everything because it was all like there and it was all a lot more contained than TikTok and not having like a like having a for you page on like that's on TikTok that's so specifically curated to you is such an interesting thing that like I feel like has really like shaped like this new era of social media well it's weird because we literally like watched it split where i remember when everyone started talking about oh wait you're on this side of tiktok i'm on this side of tiktok yeah and that even was still us still being like pretty like aware of what was going on and now it's like so spread out that it's just like there it's like too much content like there's way too much content and at that time when we were like oh what side of tiktok are you on it was like oh well at least we can like almost classify all the different sides of tiktok or whatever like you know what i mean yeah and like even then it was like a lot of like okay are you on like dance video side of tiktok or are you on like funny side of tiktok where like people make like like it was like there were two sides kind of or like two or three sides really it's so interesting because like we literally saw tiktok like start and then evolve into what it is because I remember like being in freshman year of college and like in my dorm room and my freshman year roommate was like she'd always be on TikTok on her phone and I would be like what like what is that like what, like, what are you <laughs> what and the fuck like is literally that? and I'd be like I'm not getting on that bullshit like you cannot pay me to get on that app well also it used to be musically no exactly and that's why I was like okay well you cannot pay me to get on this app like it's so stupid and there was like a huge superiority complex with TikTok when it first started where there were like this group of people who were like I'm not getting on TikTok and then, like, because I also remember being in, like, club meetings and, like, us, like, talk. Like, I was, like, in my, like, charge meeting. Oh, um, no. Like, talking about, like, TikTok no. and, like, girls being, like, yeah, like, I was so against it, but I, like, gave in and now I'm, like, addicted to it. Like, da-da-da. 
Mm-hmm. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's like so interesting too how cuz the people who were like I'm not getting on TikTok were so adamant about it. Like they were so like I was like that. No, but it's so crazy how like you can like be so adamant on that, but then something can just infiltrate society to a point where like you have, you have to. to. Yeah. Like you even if you're not well, getting on it, like you're going to know about it even if you don't want to. To be fair, like it, it, I feel like even not being on it you're not missing that much well yeah. like you just feel like you are like with certain jokes and stuff I mean I guess it's different though because I think people who aren't on it like and if you're not on other social media and it doesn't all like leak in together yeah. like sometimes then it's like okay you're kind of removed from society but I don't know because I I only got on it in the era of like quarantine once I finally like gave in because I was really riding for Vine too I was yeah. riding for Vine yeah. too and that's also something interesting that we should talk about because there almost was a Vine too by the same creator called Bite <laughs> I was yep. a beta tester just oh my god putting that out there and people knew me on there because my username I got the username Brittany you know and that's like a crazy thing to get so uh, and I was like on the page it didn't work stuff. But it flopped. It didn't work. And then after it flopped, I was like, fine, I'll try it. <laughs> and then I got on and then I tried to get famous during quarantine. And low key, I like was popping off on there. But then I was like, I hate this crap. And then I got off. But I did get famous on my Urban Outfitters TikToks. And that's her TikTok story. That's my TikTok story. Thank you. Yeah. No, well, I'm like not really on it now. Like I only because also it's so interesting being on it to post TikToks for the podcast because I'll like post TikToks for that and then I'll get off and I won't ever go on TikTok besides that because I like hate the app so much now. And I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything ever. But I think that's because um, like you said, like it all kind of just leaks into other places. Mm -hmm. So I'll like see it in other places and it's not like we really hang out with people who are like oh my god have you seen this tiktok well i feel like it's almost impossible to do that at this point because everyone's so separate on there it's like you're living a separate world that's just curated for you instead of it being like more like it obviously is a joint experience in a lot of ways but then it also is this very individual experience now and I don't know. Well, I I had like a point to also like I was I was just trying to like explain like oh I was on it and then yeah. I like I felt kind of involved. I think during quarantine is when everyone felt the most involved and which is also crazy because that was when all of like the real like TikTok stars kind of were born mm-hmm. and then it was like now can you really be a TikTok star? You can't really. I don't know. Like maybe my take on that is wrong, but I think that like No, I think you're right. Like I don't think people can get famous off TikTok anymore because we've like, not the decided. Way, not the way that like Charlie did. Yeah. Or, like, like not the way, the way like, Addison did. Yeah. And not the way that like for Freak Show did. Mm-hmm. Like because that was so formative to that was like what TikTok was. And I remember like for Freak Show was like the only like group of like people on TikTok who I was like, okay, they're funny. Like I like yeah. them. And like like they are more because I feel like everyone was craving that like, okay, where's like the Drew and Enya of TikTok? You know what yeah. I mean? Like who's yeah. gonna like make this app like actually funny? And I feel like they did that, which is really interesting. And it came at, like, exactly the time when it could. And then I feel like after that, it's like, okay, now we've decided who these TikTok creators are. The same way we have with a lot of big YouTubers. And the same way we did with a lot of Viners, like, and, like, Twitter people. And, like, it's just, like, very hard to, like, build a following from nothing. But in the beginning, it was so easy. And I think that's why people liked it a lot. Because even people with a lot of followers now, like, people who we know who we're friends with who have, like, so many followers on tiktok like nobody knows who they are yeah (laughs) like they're not gonna like be known like even a lot of people who got famous during quarantine time like aren't known off so like i feel like you really just had to like cement yourself in the beginning and like just like go off and do everything which and now it's which is why also because it was like a new or tiktok was a new social media app and it was the first new one in a long time Mm. and I think that that's so interesting when a new social media app comes around because it's like you never know if it's gonna stick like even talking about like Vine like Vine too like like no one knew if that was gonna stick and like you were just like making like you were trying to like get famous on that because you Mm -hmm. didn't know if it was gonna stick and it's like then TikTok came around and it's like no one knew if TikTok was gonna stick but like that's the one that stuck and it's like the people that got famous off of the early days are like oh like like they like just like did it randomly I feel like 
do you think anything will be like possible for it to like come along and stick harder after because I think like maybe we need a lot of time in between because of how like attached people are to like the apps we have like but, in between social media apps like a new I social mean, media app I'm ask. I- I'm kind of I'm talking about like another one like a new yeah. one yeah, yeah. coming in and doing what all these ones have done but it's like it's really hard when something has already been cemented to like yeah break in well I think it's also like it ha- would have to serve like a new purpose because that's yeah. like the thing like TikTok was like the first like short form content app and like like even thinking about like when snapchat started like snapchat was like revolutionary because it was like oh you can send like temporary like pictures and like insane because like thinking about that now it's like that's like the bare like minimum and it's like so like rudimentary to every app because now you can do that it's weird because yeah. all the apps take the other thing that yeah. the app does and then they yeah. implement it so that they yeah. don't fall behind that's no it is like and it's also so interesting like just like the psychology of like what stays and what is a trend like even thinking about be real because be real was like a new thing like that yeah. wasn't ever like a thing on any app before where it's like oh capturing a moment a day which in concept sounds like a really like that's a good idea and it feels like people would really love that but the fact that like especially because it was like it's just like a candid moment like that's like literally pandering to like everything that people like Mm -hmm. these days but it's so interesting how that was just like a trend that people were on for really for like a certain amount of time and people loved it when they were on it and then it just got like dismissed but I think it's also because like it was almost this like it was like kind of like work almost yeah in this way but also like like i think people got tired of having to do it like snapchat also if you think about it was also work with like keeping up streaks and stuff but that was different because there was like an incentive toward it of like oh i want to have like i like i have like a 70 day streak with this person i'm not gonna break it well i think it's like a thing of whether or not an app is self-sustaining because if you think Mm -hmm. about it like be real isn't really self-sustaining because people aren't just going at it all day and posting and like yeah if you like yeah I don't know it's like I can I can like see the thing that like makes that fall off if that makes sense no same I think honestly my prediction would be that an app is gonna come along and do the same thing that like Twitter did in the beginning but it's gonna do all of the things like it's pictures it's videos Mm -hmm. and it's like words but it's gonna do the same thing but without like the algorithm and people are gonna want that and like it like way more because like I don't know I think like removing the algorithm from something like I think we need a little bit of an algorithm but I think that that can be like such a separate thing I don't know well Twitter's like all just an algorithm now like like I think people just really miss when things were in chronological order yeah no because I feel like everyone like also I remember the like nostalgia for Instagram feeds like being in chronological order and even like Instagram feeds now have like suggested like so much no so much yeah and it like fills your brain and you can never like catch up but they don't want us to catch up because then you'll keep scrolling we don't you um Hey, Josh, I'm curious if you were ever on the pro, pro anaforms, if you ever put weights in your pockets. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Sorry. <laughs> oh, like, hey, Josh, like, oh, my God, you should come on the podcast. Like, ah, oh, like, come here. I'm like, mm-hmm. is that better? Mm-hmm. Don't want to grow.